guys, welcome back to Wong Chemistry channel. For this video, it's the part 3 of your topic 5.1 gas. And in this video, we are going to discuss only about Charles Law. So let's see what Charles Law is about. First and foremost, Charles Law stated that at the fixed amount of gas and constant pressure, the volume of the gas is directly proportional to the absolute temperature in Kelvin. So, we have two things that will remain constant over here. And the things that remain constant is the amount of gas that we also call number of mole. And the second thing that remain constant is the pressure. The pressure of the gas must remain constant. And then the two variables will be changing in Charles Law is actually your volume of the gas and also the temperature of the gas. But just be very careful over here. The temperature in Charles Law must be in Kelvin. Alright? And the relationship between the volume and temperature, they are directly proportional. Directly proportional means when the volume increase, the temperature will increase. Or when the temperature increase, the volume shall increase. Either way will do because they are directly proportional. By looking at the diagram, let us check the first thing. Let's try to calculate the number of particles that you have in this condition. Let's say this is my first condition, this is my second condition. So the number of particles that you have in your first condition and also the number of particles that you have in your second condition, they shall be the same. Why the number of particles must be the same? Simple, because the number of mole is constant. So you can see that, that you have 12 particles and also you have 12 particles over here. That represent the number of mole remain constant, all right? And the things that changing is the fire. Look at the fire. When the fire is larger, means that the temperature over here is higher in your second condition, while the temperature is lower in your first condition, okay? And as we agree, when the temperature increase, the volume shall increase. Let's look at the volume of your container. Can you see that the volume of your container right now increase? The volume is much bigger in the second condition than the first one. The volume in the first condition is smaller because the temperature is lower. So from here, you can see that your V1 is smaller than your V2. That is because your T1 is smaller than your T2. So from here, you can see that when the temperature increase over here, the volume will also increase. The higher the temperature, the higher the volume. Simple, easy. And since we agree that the volume and the temperature are directly proportional, so you can work out the mathematic formula from this relationship. So volume directly proportional with the temperature, when we cross them over, all right, when we cross them, you realize that you will have your V over T equals to constant, okay? Remember the cross, all right, you're going to multiply them cross. So when you cross them up, you will have your V over T. That's why you will have the formula of your Charles law of V1 over T1 equals to V2 over T2, all right? And the main thing is definitely what is your V1 and what is your V2? Your V1 and V2 is the volume, where your volume can be in litre or milliliter, but the volume over here must have the same unit. It can be in litre, it can be in milliliter, but the unit must be the same. You can have option on the volume, but the temperature you don't have option. The T1 and T2 over here is temperature, but the temperature in Charles Law must be in Kelvin. You don't have an option. The temperature in Charles Law must always be in Kelvin. And just a kind reminder, talking about Kelvin, 0 degrees Celsius is equals to 273.15 Kelvin. In the other words, 
changing from degrees Celsius to Kelvin, we are going to plus 273.15. Please remember that the temperature in your child's law must be in Kelvin. And this is the conversion from degrees Celsius to Kelvin. All right? There is no option for the unit in here. And that is the formula of Charles Law. Simple. Next, let's look at some graph for Charles Law. From the relationship of volume is directly proportional with temperature, you can see both of the graph that you obtain over here is a positive linear graph because your volume is directly proportional with the temperature. But what makes these two graph different is actually on the x axis. If you look very carefully, the x axis of these two graphs is slightly different by the unit. Both are in temperature, but one of the unit is in degree Celsius, one of the unit is in Kelvin. And if the unit is in Kelvin, when the temperature is in Kelvin, your graph must start at zero. Okay, because that is zero Kelvin. All right. But if your graph is a degree Celsius, then your positive curve will not be touching the zero. You must have an intercept C. All right. You must have your y equals to mx plus C. Compared to this graph is your y equals to mx. Okay. So what is this negative 273.15 degrees Celsius and the zero Kelvin stand for? Both of this is what we call absolute zero temperature. Absolute zero temperature is when it's zero Kelvin or when it's negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. They are the same. Okay, so what is actually absolute zero temperature? Absolute zero temperature is when the volume of the gas right now is zero liter. The volume of the gas is zero. Why? Because we agree on when the temperature increase, the volume increase. So when the temperature become higher, all right, when the gas is heated, the volume of the gas will increase or expand. And what happened when the temperature decreased? Have you ever thought about that? When the temperature increase, the volume become bigger. So when the temperature decrease, the volume must get smaller. Agree? because they are directly proportional. What would be the temperature when the volume gets so small until the volume is zero? All right, the temperature that will cause the volume to reach zero liter is what we call absolute zero temperature, where it's zero Kelvin or negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. That is what we call your absolute zero temperature, okay? where the volume will become zero. All right, simple. Next, let's look at the explanation of Charles law by using kinetic molecular theory. So in the Charles law, when the gas is heated, means that your temperature increase. Okay, what happened when the temperature increase? The kinetic energy of the molecule increase. And guys, when the kinetic energy of the molecule increase, it means your molecule move faster. Looking at this. So obviously, this one, the molecule move slower. The molecule move slower because the temperature decrease. All right. But over here, the molecule move faster. Why the molecule move faster? Because the temperature over here is higher. So when the gas is heated, means that the temperature of the gas increase because we are heating it, all right? When the temperature increase, the kinetic energy of the gas particles must be increasing because you have more energy provided. Therefore, the molecule will then move faster. And when the molecule move faster, the frequency of the collision between the gas particle and also between the gas particle and wall of container will increase. The frequency of collision will definitely increase when you tend to move faster, right? You can see over here, when you move faster, you definitely collide more, all right? So what happens when you collide more? During the collision, pressure will be released, okay? Pressure will be released. 
when pressure is released, when you collide more by right, the pressure shall increase. But the pressure must remain constant because in Charles law, the number of mole and the pressure must remain constant. So when the pressure must remain constant, what can we do to decrease the pressure over here? Simple. We increase the volume of the container. That's why when the temperature increased, your particles will expand. Because we want to reduce the pressure that produced, we want to ensure that the pressure produced is constant. All right? That's why when the temperature increased, the volume increase. All right? Simple. That is everything about Charles law. Okay? So at the end of the day, we are trying to prove what Charles law said. So when the temperature increase over here, you can see that the volume also increase. All right? That is what the Charles law trying to say. With one condition, the number of particles and the pressure must remain constant. You can see over here, we have four dot, four particles. Over here, I also have four particles. That means my number of moles remain constant. And my pressure cannot increase. My pressure also must remain constant. Therefore, the volume will increase. Therefore, what Charles Law say is correct. When the temperature increase, the volume increase. Agreed? Okay, simple. And before we end, let's try some example of Charles Law. Your first example of Charles Law over here. A sample of gas balloon is heated from 25 degrees Celsius to 78 degrees Celsius. So let's make this one T1. That is your T2. At atmospheric pressure, if the initial volume before the heating, so before the heating, that is my first volume before the heating means it's your t1 the lower temperature so that is my v1 that mean the volume of the balloon after heated after heated means it's the second condition so that is my v2 and as always do not calculate with the equation straight away take out the value so you have your t1 given 25 degrees celsius and then you have your v1 given 520 milliliter. All right. Then you move to your T2 and your V2. Your T2 given 78 degrees Celsius. Your V2 is the one that we are looking for. Like we said previously, the unit is extremely important in your Charles law. We know that in the Charles law, the temperature must be in Kelvin. All right. So what do we do? We change it to Kelvin plus 273.15 over here, equals to 298.15 Kelvin. And the temperature in here, 78 degrees Celsius, also changing to Kelvin by using 273.15. That will equals to 351.15 Kelvin. All right, make sure the unit of your temperature right now is in Kelvin. And make sure the unit of the volume is the same. The unit of V1 is in milliliter. Therefore, the V2 that we are going to calculate must also be in milliliter. Make sense? Next, the formula. You have your V1 over T1 equals to your V2 over T2. So your V1, make sure the pairing is correct, 520 milliliter. Your T1 is a 298.15 Kelvin. While your V2 is the one that I'm looking for, and your T2 is 351.15 Kelvin. Press your calculator correctly. And without pressing the calculator, I know that your V2 must be higher than your V1. Why do I know? Simple. Look at the temperature. Your T2 is a 351.15 and your T1 is a 298. So your T2 is higher than your T1. Automatically, your V2 also must be higher than your V1 because they are directly proportional. So the V2 that you calculate over here must be bigger than 520 milliliter. And the answer is, 612.44 milliliter. Alright. 
Agree? Just make sure the unit of the temperature must be in Kelvin. Therefore, make sure you know how to convert your degree Celsius to Kelvin. Alright? Simple. Let's try another example over here and also the last example for this video. A 0.5 liter of bottle is deflated when it moves from room temperature to the freezer of 0 degree Celsius. That mean the volume of the deflated bottle in freezer. So that is my room temperature T1. That is my V1. My freezer, 0 degree Celsius T2. The volume 2 is the one that we are looking for. And I think the trick over here is the word room temperature. I hope you remember your room temperature means your T1 is 25 degree Celsius. Okay, I hope everybody knows that the room temperature is actually 25 degree Celsius. Okay, and if you know the room temperature is 25 degree Celsius already, then you can take out the value as always. You have the V1 given, which is 0 0.5 liter. And then you have the T1, 25 degrees Celsius. Change it to Kelvin by plus with 273.15. Therefore, you have 298.15 Kelvin. All right? Simple. And then you have your T2. Your T2 is 0 degrees Celsius. That is equals to 273.15 Kelvin. And your V2 is the one that we are looking for. And before we proceed, check the unit. Make sure your temperature is already in Kelvin. Your temperature is already in Kelvin. And your volume given is in liter. Therefore, the volume that we are going to find must also be in liter. The unit must be the same. Remember that? So be very careful with the unit over here. Next. Move to your formula, and it's very simple formula. V1 over T1 equals to V2 over T2. So your V1 is your 0 0.5. Your T1 is a 298.15 Kelvin room temperature. And then your V2 is the one that we are looking for. And T2 is 273.15, which is your 0 degree Celsius. And press your calculator correctly. The V2 that calculated must be in the unit of liter as we have agreed before. And what would be the V2? Looking at the temperature, your T1 right now is much higher than your T2. Your T2 temperature drop because it's only 273. Therefore, when the temperature drop, the volume must also drop. In the other words, your V2 must be smaller than your V1. Your V1 is a 0 0.5 liter. So your V2 calculated must be smaller than 0 0.5, which is 0 0.458 liter. That is the volume that we are looking for when the temperature drop from room temperature to 0 degree Celsius. Simple? Easy. So be very careful with the unit of the temperature when you are using the formula of Charles Law. And that's it for this video about Charles Law. If you have any question regarding Charles Law, drop it in the comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Remember to like the video, subscribe to my channel and share it to your friend. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next video. Pocket.com